welcome. We've already met, but hi. Okay, so I think we should first talk about what were the differences, because I wrote a book and you made a movie, and there's huge differences in, you know, both of those things. So, I mean, I guess one of the things would be that a book you write, I mean, not, of course, not alone, but you write it when you're doing the actual writing, mostly by yourself. But when you're doing a movie, I mean, you have to wake up at like five every day and work with a bunch of people, some who you may not be, I won't say not like, but you know, you know what I mean. So, how, what, what, what are the challenges when you're making a, a movie? I certainly don't know about the challenges. You know, I, I'm merely a debutante. I really don't know what the challenges were. I was just blindly following the instructions given by our directors. So yeah, I mean, uh, it's up to you people, the writers, of course, who write the script and who give this, who brilliantly shape the script. And they are the ones who decide who, uh, what we are supposed to do, and they decide our work. So I feel that uh, whatever we do, or half of the credit really goes to them. Even in Dangal, I feel uh, if it would not have been a brilliant script, I don't think we would have been such act, uh, good actors. So I think the credit goes to the writers. So it's amazing what you're, whatever you're doing. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. True. So what kind of research did you do just to get to get into the role of any character? How do you? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. It was just I was just called for an Amir Khan movie. That was it. That was my moment. Oh, it's an Amir Khan movie. Let's go. Doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> so. Wow. That's I should I should try that. <laughs> What am I doing? No, no, I'm doing everything wrong, clearly. <laughs> so what, what in, I mean, of course, I mean, you just kind of answered my question, but what kind of inspires you to make great art, you know, as opposed to just Snapchatting all day? Agni, I'm looking at you. Hands. <laughs> I'm also on Hands. What is the question? <laughs> the question is what inspires Snapchat distracted me. What, <laughs> what inspires you to go beyond the Snapchat story? Nothing really inspires me. I mean, I really want to get out of social media, but, uh, but I don't know. Nothing really inspires me. I'm so boring in life. Nothing inspires me at all. I would like to raise a bit of awareness about the difficulties that come with having short hair. <laughs> because it's not easy. And what did you say? You were on the set one day, right? You told me. I was on the set one day and this is the, like we, when we actually started shooting after my hair was cut. And I was very excited. Oh wow, I'm in a movie. Why don't people come up to me and click pictures with me? So, so this, this, this first experience of my first picture, where this little kid comes to me and he's like, Hey, you Amir Khan film, right? Hey, brother, let me a photo with you. He's like, taken a bath for 10 minutes and I didn't talk to anyone for an hour. I mean it. I didn't talk to anyone. I sat in my van and I was like, I'm not coming out of this place. No, I, I went into the ladies' bathroom and I'm just trying to wash my hands. I'm not trying to get into this screaming kid in the corner. And the mother is just like, can you please calm down? It's not that big of a deal. I don't know what they were talking about. And then the kid goes, but mommy, he's not even supposed to be in here. And I was like, excuse <laughs> you. So yeah, it is. It's it's way tougher than people think it is. First of all, well, I don't have seen you in long hair, but you look really good. <laughs> no, let me think. What does that even mean? Come on, I can ask myself a question. Um, let me just think of a, a normal question that somebody would want to. So how long in total did it take you to make the film versus the taking a red book? Because mine took like one and a half to two years. So how long? I really don't know. For, see, there's like. There's a difference in uh, writing and when you act. So I yeah. can only talk about my part. Yeah. Because I was not involved in the, the whole part. Yeah, the whole preparation or whatever. So I was only involved for eight months. I can only talk yeah. about my involvement in yeah. it. I was only involved for eight months. Just I know. I think it took them four years to write the script and execute everything. I only know. Okay. Okay. But one question that I generally want to ask. Whenever I listen to myself on a video, I, I hear myself and I sound really squeaky. Does that happen to you when you're watching yourself on film? You just I hate like, oh. to watch myself on screen. Right? I hate it. Like, isn't that kind of annoying? It's annoying and it's so embarrassing. It's really embarrassing. I hate it. I never watch my interviews. I was scared to watch my film. Yeah, but you have to go, right? Because you can't be like, ah, you know. No, I can't watch it. I don't want to watch it. It's just too, too down class. The first few hours I shot, my voice was down. So oh. it was OK. In the movie, I'm like, oh, and I have to watch myself 
fun uh, for just like, well, okay, I actually thought of a nice quote to wrap up on, so I'm gonna wrap up on a nice note, which is that there's this really, I guess now that you, you asked what inspires me, I have a good answer for that now. There's a quote from a movie, Midnight in Paris, that my friend Anjali, who's sitting somewhere where I can't see, um, showed me, um, where um, Judy Dench says, um, we all fear death and question our place in the universe. The artist's job is not to succumb to despair, but to find an antidote for the emptiness of existence. So that's what inspires me. stories like that um, not that I've read anyway especially because it's not really a story about you know all the political trauma in Kashmir it's just a story that's set in Kashmir so yeah I guess that's it um, my friend because she spoke about um, her London mate um, that came from a fairy tale and was just so beautiful and so kind of it's kind of one thing led to another as they say and the idea kind of grew over a while and you know shifted to Kashmir and became magic and so yeah I guess the, but that was the first inspiration was that house in, in London. Yeah very nice everyone's very sweet you know very caring and hospitable um, which you know kind of makes it even sadder that you know it's a place that's perceived as so violent um, so we visit Kashmir once every year we try um, because dad grew up there so you know. well Dad told me a story about when he was younger, the, the heat, they would have to run out and get firewood and they would have to come in quickly because then your chinks, cheeks get pink with the cold and then you have to run back in and, um, he, and then you put the wood inside the heater and you heat um, khana on top of the heater and then you eat dinner. So that I thought had to go in the book because that was just such a lovely idea of a way to spend a winter that you can never get in Mumbai, for example. Thank you. What kind of films? Well, okay, honestly, I, I, I wouldn't be being honest if I said that I didn't watch more English films than Hindi films. Um, I guess my, oh right, I guess my favorites recently have been Birdman, La La Land, I love that, that just came out. Um, I love La La Land. I, I also, I'm, I'm thinking of movies that really kind of, I also loved all the Disney films growing up. So those are the kind of films that I really enjoyed, especially films that celebrate art as a whole. Not really sad films, which is why La La Land was like such a, you know, amazing thing for me. So yeah, those are the kind of movies that I watch generally. And also sometimes the whole family gets together and watches a TV show or something. So. My dad's favorite, I think actually um, two. Um, Ferrari Ki Savari was one because it was just such a sweet story about a boy with a dream that I really liked because that was at its core. So that one, and also Broken Horses, which was the English film he made that nobody but me apparently liked. So yeah, that was that was the second one. Well, we, I mean, Dad did grow up in Kashmir, and we have visited Kashmir once um, a, a year. And it's also a place that I think it became a story worth telling as I said, when you set it in Kashmir, because then it actually has something to show to people, which is that it's not just violence, and it's not just politics, and it's also just a beautiful place where you, you could find magic. Um, Neil Gaiman is one of my favorites. Lewis Carroll is another one of my favorites. Of course, um, J.K. Rowling, who is on the wall at the back. Um, many others, Roald Dahl, I used to love when I was a kid. 
Yeah, th those were, and also Shel Silverstein, his poetry, his drawings, because these were authors that completely challenged what, what could be perceived as real and what could be perceived as proper writing. So, yeah. Since you started writing quite early, do you see a writer in printing making? I think so. Well, I've always known it would be something creative, but I guess I still have to think about it, of course. But I think so, yeah, I think so. I think probably. I've definitely drawn to fiction and fantasy most because that's when a story is fun for me, is when it has magic in it. Um, I guess I've always, yeah, definitely fiction over non-fiction because I always used to get bored reading non-fiction. Um, but also kind of a more...